Hey guys, welcome back to the Putting Your Financial Plan Together series. We are in part seven of this 14 part series today. If you are just joining, the first six videos are on my YouTube channel. I encourage you to check those out and follow along with us. In this series, we're going to cover many of the items needed in order to put together a financial plan so that you can either give your existing financial plan a wellness checkup or put together your very first financial plan to help make sure that your day-to-day -day financial habits are helping to work towards your long-term financial goals. In this video, we are going to cover auto cost, starting with insurance, then upkeep, and finishing with auto loans. With insurance, it would be helpful for you to pull your most recent policy that you received from your insurance company and have it in front of you, and we can just talk through what some of those different items are. For the one that I have, it starts with automobile liability insurance. It's going to say bodily injury and property damage likely. It's then going to go into collision and comprehensive coverage. You're then going to have an uninsured motorist section and then finishes up with automobile medical payments. There's some other things I could have access to if I wanted to, such as roadside coverage or uh, tow trucks, etc. But I don't get those within my auto insurance because my policy on insurance is that it's there to cover me for things that I can't afford to pay. And so when it comes to add-ons that are things that, while costly, are within the realm of it not being hard to cover them, then I'm not going to insure myself in order to have someone else pay those. I'll just pay them if they happen. And instead, I want my insurance dollars focused on something that would be catastrophic to my financial situation if it happened. So starting out, we have bodily injury and we have property damage. Bodily injury, first one, is damage to individuals in the other car or whoever you make contact with. And so it's not your own car, it's whoever you make contact with when you're at fault. And if your bodily injury, for instance, is 100,000, 300,000, that is per person and per accident. So if you cause a wreck and you create a $400,000 bodily injury situation, then your insurance would pay $300,000, you would have to pay out of pocket $100,000. That's actually a real life scenario. A friend of a friend had to go through, ended up having to sell his house in order to cover that $100,000 out of pocket. So it's definitely important that you're not under covered on that portion of your insurance. You then move into property damage, and just like the bodily injury, it's, it's when you're at fault and it's the other individual or item that you made contact with. It's just instead of the people, it's the item. So it's the contact you made with the other individual's car. Maybe you went off the road and hit a fence, etc. That's what the property damage covers. You then go into collision and comprehensive, both of them. Well, collisions if you're at fault, and that's the amount, the deductible amount that you have to pay when you have your car fixed when you're at fault. If you weren't at fault, it would be covered by that property damage section of the other individual's auto insurance. However, the comprehensive coverage is things outside of your control, so it could be theft, vandalism, weather. Those would be situations that even though it's not your fault, you'll still have to pay that deductible, but then your insurance company will pay the rest. So if you don't really wanna to have to pay as much in that, those situations, then you would want a really low deductible, but the lower the deductible is, the higher the premium is. So you gotta make a choice there. You then get into the uninsured motorist section. It's got a bodily injury and a property damage section. It's the same thing as those ones we already talked about. It's just in this situation, you're not at fault, but the individual that hits you doesn't have insurance, so they don't have bodily injury and property damage to cover you. And so therefore, the bodily injury and property damage in your policy covers you. That section is relatively inexpensive. It's a lot less in every situation I've ever seen than the part to cover you if you're at fault. 
And so I know in some ways it seems unfair that you should have to pay, but, but, but you're covering yourself and, and it's not really that expensive. So it's a good thing to have. And then you have automobile medical payments. And this would be the section where if your own car got hurt uh, in the accident, the individuals in your car, then you or the other individuals in the car would seek these automobile medical payments. And so that final section would be applicable to you. Make sure you consult with your insurance agent on all this. This is how my policy works. It's my understanding that generally speaking, this is how all policies work, but you'd still wanna ask those questions when you are uh, getting your insurance quote. Always remember if you bundle insurance that you tend to get a better rate. So whoever you have your homeowner's insurance with or your renter's insurance or any other insurance where they also sell auto, a lot of times if you bundle stuff with the same group, you can get a better rate. So if you already got other insurance with someone else, see if you can get a better rate by doing your auto there or potentially moving all of it to someone else. So always remember bundle discounts. My recommendation to you, and I actually changed after I heard that story of that individual who was responsible for $400,000 and had to pay $100,000 out of pocket. What I did was I moved my collision and my comprehensive coverage deductibles up to 1,000, which is higher than what some people carry. And with that premium savings, I took my bodily injury section and took it from 100, 300,000 to 200, 250 and 500,000. And then I also, with all the remainder of the premium, boosted up the property damage and the medical payment sections. Because I don't, I don't wanna pay $1,000, but paying $1,000 is something I can do if I need the collision or comprehensive, uh, situ if the collision or comprehensive situation happens, and I can do it and it's not gonna wreck my financial situation. But if I cause a $400,000 accident, hopefully not, then I'm going to have complete coverage for that if I have a 250 and 500 plan. But if I have 100 to 300, I'm out of pocket 100,000 like that individual was I told you about. So I like to really focus my premium dollars on those items that could really wreck my financial plan and leave myself exposed in those areas where I can easily afford to pay it. So moving on to upkeep, I don't have a lot of thoughts here. I will tell you that I looked up what AAA recommends and AAA recommends, it's a precise number, $1,186 a year for upkeep is the amount that you should be saving and this would include maintenance and tires. This is obviously going to vary based on the year of the vehicle and I didn't do a lot of research around where they kind of landed when they said 1186, but if you think about it, it's roughly a hundred dollars a month, and I would assume AAA would be pretty good with things like this. It also depends on how handy you are. The more things you know how to do on your car yourself, the less you need in savings to cover items with your car. Where if you're like me and that list is very narrow, then you need to have a little bit more saved up if something happens to your car. And so there's a few questions you have to ask there. How old's my car? Are there any known problems? How handy am I if they come up? And then from there, you can probably figure out, do I wanna go with that 1200? Do I wanna go a little lower, a little higher? So hopefully that's helpful. And then last, I wanted to cover auto loans. I do not recommend auto loans. I don't recommend auto loans for a couple of reasons. One, it's a loan on a depreciating asset meaning that the second you buy that car, it's doing nothing but going down in value, except in really, really rare collector situations. And you're putting yourself in a position where it's very easy to be underwater if you're not careful. So I would caution you, I know that that really sharp looking, fancy car looks nice, but find something that you can afford to pay cash or save up and then buy the car if you're in a situation where you just absolutely can't, or maybe this is an area where you disagree with me, and that's fine, we don't have to agree on everything, and you wanna get an auto loan, it looks like two and a half to 3% is a general range that you can expect to find right now based on a quick Google search that I did when I was putting this video together. Auto loans tend to be amortized, and at a high level, what I'm saying 
is that you're going to pay more interest up front and it'll gradually become less interest with each payment and more principal with each payment. And then if it's a five year loan, for instance, it's designed that at the end of five years, you've paid off the loan. If it's seven years, you've paid off the loan. And what they'll do is they'll tell you if you do a seven year loan instead of the five year loan, your uh, amount that you pay a month, for instance, will be lower. Well, that's true because you have more months to pay it, but you'll actually end up in almost all cases, 99% of the time, you'll end up paying more interest. And so you really have to do the math, make the best financial decision. Maybe it's worth it to you to pay extra interest in order to have those lower monthly payments, but just make sure that you're making an informed decision when you're sitting down with financing at a dealership they are going to make everything sound very attractive. They're generally, instead of telling you something's $500, they're gonna tell you it's $6 a month or $8 a month because $500 sounds like a lot of money, but if you hear that it only costs $6 a month to add this feature, then it doesn't sound like a lot of money. And so if you're going to go down the path of getting an auto loan, crunch the numbers, do some math, make sure that this really does mean enough to you to go into debt. I would encourage you not to, but that's a decision that you're gonna to have to make. And if you can put that into your budget and it doesn't hurt any of the other buckets of your financial plan, then you're still on track. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you.